This is bad. Nugget is going through a shed and having some difficulties. If this lasts, it will cause some serious issues with this gecko. We're going to help Nugget out with this shed and help you deal with bad sheds with your reptiles too. While this discussion will focus on crested geckos, many of these points are specific to many other reptiles. Let's take a moment to talk about what shed is. Dissectasis in reptiles is a process of shedding their old skin. Think of a reptile shedding like me with red hair. No, not me with red hair. No, like me with red hair. Still no, let's, let's just move on. Like me with red hair out in the sun for a couple of hours. But why do geckos shed? There are a few reasons, but primarily it's their growth. Reptile skin doesn't grow, so they shed. But how do you tell if your gecko is shedding? You'll find your animal just looks different. Pale skin, or it can't climb, sitting down on the bottom of the enclosure instead of on vines or plants, or it's not eating. Did you know usually a couple of days before and a couple of days after, shedding gecko's appetites decline completely? Now, here's the big question. What's the difference between a normal shed and a bad shed? A normal shed will never be found. Well, maybe remnants at the bottom of the enclosure or along the decoration. Why is this? Because they normally eat their shed. Nature, you're incredible. You may actually see the gecko with small shed on its back or head. This again is normal. But this is what bad shed looks like. And this is what really bad shed looks like. You might know this, but we're going to talk about why you should be concerned about your gecko going through a bad shed. Bad sheds could cause a lot of stress on your geckos. They could self-isolate. They could become very lethargic. Again, they could lose their appetite and stop eating. This stress certainly results in no interest in breeding. Much worse, a bad shed could ultimately result in the loss of toes, loss of limbs, or loss of their tail. If left unattended, bad shed can cause infections and diseases, unfortunately ultimately causing the demise of your gecko. We certainly want to prevent this and care for our animals the best we can. So let's talk about what causes bad shed and the way you can prevent them. Then we're going to get right to helping Nugget out with its shed. Probably the main reason for this issue is improper misting practices. Notice I didn't say lack of misting or low humidity. This is important. The level of humidity in your enclosure is not as important as you may think. In nature, humidity levels go up and down. In fact, many animals that we feel need constant high levels of humidity for good care actually do better with changing levels throughout the day. To accomplish this, it's better if you mist to increase humidity as well as provide moisture on leaves and the side of the enclosure for drinking as needed. Well, that's a pretty broad statement, isn't it? Here's an example and another important point coming up. An early morning misting to replicate the availability of dew in nature is preferred. Also, misting more frequently in the winter than summer due to most of our homes drying out so much in the winter is required. But here's the kicker. Always mist until the enclosure dries out before misting again. Too much moisture can be as problematic as too little moisture. Additional misting could potentially lead to excessive dampness and result in mold in the enclosure. This, of course, could cause your animal to develop respiratory issues. Not good. An extremely simple way to keep your reptiles or geckos hydrated is to include a water dish. A simple water dish is inexpensive, easy to clean, easy to fill, and allows your pet to drink as they need. Many reptiles will use a humid hide. You may hear them referred to as hide boxes or even lay boxes. Reptiles such as crested, leopard, chameleon, banded, and many other geckos utilize these hides to both hydrate, absorb moisture, and as a place to lay their eggs. You can find hides at pet stores and online at Amazon and other major reptile supply companies, but you can also easily and inexpensively make your own. Start with a plastic food container. Dollar store, here I come. Drill a hole a bit larger than the width of your gecko. Next, add materials that hold moisture. My preference is peat moss, and I've tried a lot of other materials. Oh, please do not use dirt or vermiculite or, for goodness sake, paper towel. Hey, want to hear a fact that you will not find on any Facebook groups or articles or YouTube videos? Many, many times bad sheds are not caused by issues with humidity. The issue may be due to improper or incomplete supplementation schedules. Reptiles, especially crusted geckos, certainly need vitamins and minerals to stay healthy. A lack of these supplements can and will impact their ability to shed. As an example, we dust the insects we feed our geckos, especially dust and feeders every time we feed crusted geckos. For geckos that regularly feed from a dish, we offer a vitamin and calcium mix in the mealworm dish in their enclosure. I believe this is one simple practice that has almost eliminated shed issues in our facility. If you find a reptile with a bad shed, the cause may be due to stress. 
Inadequate care and poor enclosure conditions will cause this. Is there a tank mate that is bullying your animal, causing it not to eat and possibly losing weight? Is the temperature adequate? Do they have ample places to hide? If your reptile is stressed and having shed issues, you should probably check their enclosure mates. Do a bit more research on the animal's requirements and make sure the maintenance of the enclosure is up to par. If you feel you've covered all the issues mentioned and your reptile still has shed issues, here's another consideration. Do you have material in their enclosures that is a bit abrasive? Reptiles will use wood, rocks, or other materials to rub against to take the shed off. Assure the pieces are not too abrasive or they may tear the animal skin. Do you keep logs of your reptiles' activities, your feeding schedules, breeding, health issues? You might want to keep track of any shed issues as well. This will allow you to become more proactive in fixing the issues before they continue on and on. Of course, there may be issues where the shedding is past the point that you can personally help the gecko. If the shed is around the eyes or around the genital area, it's time to consult with an expert breeder or even a reptile vet. Poor Nugget still has shed that we need to deal with. Have you heard or even used a product called Shed Aid or Shed Ease? This is what they claim. Shed Ease encourages old skin to easily slide off of your reptile's body. Also ideal for animals suffering from poor health, diet stress, or lack of humidity. Adds healthy luster to their skin. Can be used in between sheds as well as during. In my experience and consulting with a number of big name breeders, these products offer little or no help with shedding over the following methods. Our preferred method of handling shed issues is to provide the animal with a sauna. No, not that kind of sauna. Here are the materials that you'll need. A deli cup, paper towel, and warm water. Oh, and your gecko. A quick note before we give our gecko the sauna treatment. This is not a bath. Do not put your gecko in standing water. Your gecko just doesn't do this in nature and we should not subject them to this in our care. Let's moisten the paper towel. Not too wet, just barely damp. Place the moist paper towel in the deli cup. Now add the gecko. Simple as that. It's best if you can place the deli cup somewhere a bit warmer than their enclosure. For crested geckos, make sure it's not more than 78 to 80 degrees. How long should you keep a gecko in the cup? I found a couple to three hours is plenty. After the sauna, we'll place the gecko back in his or her enclosure and check the next day. You may need to repeat this process, but wait a day in between saunas to allow the skin to completely dry out again. If, after the sauna, you still find a bit of shed on your reptile, you may opt to try peeling some of the shed off yourself. Let me show you how you can do this with Nugget. I have a strong preference for not wearing gloves during this process. You just don't get the feel needed wearing gloves. Now, this is a key. Make sure you hold the reptile gently, but firmly. Start by gently peeling off larger pieces of the shed with your fingers. Once you are down to small pieces, you may need to use tweezers. Be extremely careful around nostrils and eyes and the vent area. If shedding issues persist, I'll mention it again, you may need a visit to your local reptile vet. But before you do, please message an expert or message me and let me help you. Prevention is the best cure. Proper care, supplementation, and enclosure setup is so vital to preventing shed issues with your animal. If you have any questions about the proper care of your crested geckos, make sure that you watch this video right here. I talk about the best way that you can take care of your animals. Thank you everyone for watching. Again, please let me know if you have any questions about shedding. We'll see you next video.